Good morning. Um, I'm happy that we have a full house again. And uh, first of all, I would like to invite all the Lighthouse projects that are presenting to join me here on stage. We will get, uh, I think, two more chairs. Okay, Jean, Jean Philippe, Jean Okay, so um, first, let me welcome uh, this group here. We have Sebastian from uh, AG Data Hub. We have uh, Oliver from uh, Catena X. We have Stefan from Eleanor X. We have uh, Jean-Francois from uh, Iona, Eupro Gigant, uh, Matthias, um, Mobility Data Space, uh, Michael, SDSN, Matthias, and from Struktura X, Klaus. Um, so yesterday, we showed you how a simple business case or a simplified business case is actually working. And uh, we talked you through the business case, through the process, through the linkage to the framework, and then we brought you down into the, uh, into the cell of technology, uh, where you can see where the engine runs, and then we brought you back up and see how, how in, a, in, a, in a wrap up, this whole thing works together. And I promised yesterday that this is a simplified version, and now you're gonna have the real stuff, so real business implementations, which have a way higher complexity, um, and so we decided to go in a kind of a speed dating format. So we only have 10 minutes per project and all of these people can talk for more, probably half a day at least about their projects. Uh, so so uh, we have 10 minutes sharp per project um, and we ask them to explain in simple terms, what's the business problem? What is the solution? How did Gaia help achieve that solution and what are the benefits they're gaining from? And, um, at the end of this session, I think you will have a, a very good overview of what's going on and the incredible level of maturity that is already in those Lighthouse projects. And after lunch, um, we are going into deep dives. So the eight Lighthouse projects will be around on those uh, pillars. And uh, you can just join them. The people online can join them as well in separate Zoom rooms. Um, and they're going to get a deep dive presentation where you see the technology, you can see the the software running, you can ask a lot of questions and we can, we can go deeper um, on that way. So with that, I hand it over to the first one, to Agi Data Hub for the short presentation, please. Good morning. Uh, for, for 10 minutes, we'll, go, we'll take the boots together and we'll go into the fields okay uh, into the 10 million farms and our goal is to interconnect 10 million farms uh, with their 500,000 partners in order to share data and exchange data to provide innovation into the farms and to better inform consumers uh, in their everyday life and just need yeah. okay. yeah. I'm just looking for the presentation. I am the first one. I go on. No. Can I have the clicker, please, here? I mean, I, I think that, that you have the, the demonstration going on each screen, but I don't, ah, okay. Okay. So, I, even without the, the clicker, I will start. Um, about use case, I mean, three main use cases in, uh, in agri-food. First of all, the goal is to share data from the, from the fields to the, to the final uh, consumers, and it is important that the data can, thanks a lot, uh, can go from, from the field to the, to, uh, to the final consumers. 
And uh, then, uh, yeah, it's really difficult because I don't, I cannot see what's going on here. And we, we have, in, in the use case, we have not only to improve traceability from the farm to the final consumers, but also to provide information about uh, carbon print in the farming industry. And yes, it's better like that. And uh, second point is, as you know, and we, we know with Ukraine, uh, food sovereignty is a really important thing to provide uh, foods to uh, 500 million Europeans and to, to North Africa also. And so the data can improve uh, information to organize logistics to uh, provide uh, goods in, into the first processing industry in Europe, but also to export uh, goods uh, throughout the world. Okay, in order to do that, what is important is to get interoperability and portability because uh, what is specific in farms is uh, my president is a farmer and he gets more than 30 sources of data in his farms. And he don't know what the, where the data are going, what, how the data is used and processed, and what is important for him uh, before sharing data is to uh, keep the control of his data and to know where uh, his data are going and through uh, consent managers and uh, why it is important for him because it establishes trust between the farmers and its partners. That's why interoperability and portability is important. Uh, four main uh, use cases you can see there. Of course, to provide innovation in the farms, how to increase uh, good quality uh, in the farms, how to uh, provide information to the, to the market and to the final consumers, how to provide the data to the machinery um, uh, with the harvesting company, the tractors, um, and finally, how the data ca can be uh, used by first processing industry uh, throughout the, the agri-food chain. Uh, how you can use uh, Gaia-X, Agdatub is uh, one of the lighthouse projects, of course, but we are also coordinators of the uh, uh, data space agriculture with uh, 15 partners throughout 10 member states. And the goal for this uh, EU project is to interconnect all our platforms through the Gaia-X standards. For Agdata, we have two main uh, products. First of all is the product of API Agro, which is uh, data exchange platforms with more than uh, 2,000 users, already in place since two years. And one of the main uh, information I want to, to share with you is that uh, by next, next week, uh, we will be uh, totally compliant with uh, Gaia X standards thanks to uh, DAWEX implement, uh, technology implementation, and we are proud to uh, be uh, uh, GAIA compliant according to the data exchange specification. Uh, next year, at the beginning of next year, our second product, AgriTrust, which is uh, decentralized identity managers with uh, content managers, will be, of course, uh, on the way to be uh, GAIA compliant by the beginning of next year. Uh, we have more than, uh, we have lots of use cases, but we take only three use cases. First of all, uh, first use case with uh, cattle industry. Uh, we implement our situation with uh, more than 80,000 farmers to be connected with 3,000 uh, partners in order to exchange data about genetic, so how to improve genetic in, uh, in the farming. Second point is uh, Numalim, uh, which was also funded by the French government. Uh, the goal of that is to, Im to uh, improve information, uh, environmental information to the final consumers. And the third main use case is a Chamber of Agriculture, which is the, main, the major network of advisors uh, to, pro to provide a good advice to farmers. Uh, our vision uh, with our partners in, uh, on European level is to organize uh, the network of existing uh, platforms. In the farming uh, sectors, we work together since 15 years. So sometimes I'm saying that we, are, we have done a Gaia-X before Gaia-X, before, because uh, in 50, during 15 years, we organize platforms to be interconnected, and you can see that 
in Germany, France, the Netherlands and Belgium, we have already tec uh, technical platforms in place. And the goal through GAIA's uh, standards and framework is to organize the interconnectivity and interoperability between existing uh, platforms. And all this platform is available for all the other members, member states. Uh, finally, uh, I will not go through the three uh, main uh, slides, but as we are uh, IT uh, people in, in, in the room, we, you have some, some figures here. I'm not going into the uh, technical issue, but what is the, the main problem for us to deploy technology? It's not technology anymore because we, uh, we, uh, we work with uh, EN Group and Orange and Dawex in, in order to uh, implement the technology, but how uh, to be connected with the existing, uh, existing source of data, specifically with a public source of data, uh, from the government source of data in order to uh, provide good identity for farmers and which is the major uh, problem for us but uh, since last month we, we are already connected with all the government uh, data uh, identity and uh, everything is wor working really well. So I think that um, I will finish with this uh, slide. You can see here uh, final figures and how we interconnect digital identity, content management, data exchange through the, through the GAIA-X framework. And uh, that's it, the, the last slide. And I think I, uh, I, you, can, you can see that farmers are already in place and it is a really important thing for farmers to get uh, the control of their data in order to develop a trustful environment uh, for data exchange. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Sebastian. So, the next project, we don't need this. The next project, uh, Oliver, Katina X. Thank you very much. We have been the pleasure to have been here last year already. And what I just learned, this was a boxing ring. So don't start the fight because you want to collaborate, as I learned. But it's a beautiful place as a boxing ring. So thank you for giving us the chance to be here a second time. Katina X, um, as you all know, we should have talked about our business problem. What is one of our business problems? And I think Christine from Airbus explained it before a little bit. If you think about a value chain, it comes from an OEM or an Airbus or, or a BMW, Mercedes is right in the middle. But there's a huge supply chain on the left and there will be partners for recycling circular economy on the right. So far, they're not so much connected. Material flows, but for circular economy, there's no basic connection, right? There's hundreds of billions of tons of material every year. Only 9% are getting recycled. The question is, how do we get to 30 to 50% with a connection in the network? So what Katina X does is pretty much put in place standards, a product pass to connect and share information across a multi tier level. To go from left to the right and from the right to the left. To connect partners that have been not yet with our industry, like recycling partners, bring them into our industry in a shared network, bring them not together only with an OEM, but with partners that do not know in the supply chain and create a marketplace for additional supply and further create a product that is not have been there before in order to create an entire new sub ecosystem that is not possible without a digital business proposition. So that's something what we feel strongly about that only a digital business model and an element like a data space can create that has not been able to do before. Now, how do we do that? The question is, what are the ingredients? We heard a lot of our data spaces. What are the key ingredients? First and foremost, what we are doing right now within Katina, we're developing an operating system and operating model, right? Everybody needs something. We need the GAIA-X ingredients that are the neutral governance for us, but we need software to run it. And not just software, also an operating model. That's the basis. And we use connectors, Lars Nagel mentioned before, the IDS connector, I think we're all going forward to the EDC connector in the future. There is an open source thing that we all can mutually build and be interoperable in the future. Based on that operating system, that's not differentiating yet. Now comes the industry relevant parts. We call it the kits. 
You know it maybe from Apple, maybe a good or bad analogy for some of you, but it is about pretty much a basis where we say for sustainability, everything can be found here. For resiliency, for material flow, everything can be found here. The standards, the APIs, features and functional models. And then other people, software developers, communities, can build upon those kits. The last one is PLM quality. But it's not only about software. We have to bring, and I think you mentioned that before as well, we have to bring the organizations into that ecosystem. And we all know that many of our organizations we would like to get them to join are not ready. Their data readiness is not there, and they have no idea what we actually be talking here. If we get a small and medium enterprise here on stage and ask him what did he understand or she from what we talked about the last two years at uh, two days, zero. So we have to stop talking about technology, and this is the onboarding for the kids on the lower side. We have to bring this to consumer and, cons uh, and, and provider level. And that is a key element to help people to understand what we're actually doing and stop the technology talk on the outside and bring the value talk up front and help them to bring them on board. Once we have the operating system and the kits, we can create pretty much our data space. We can invite providers on the over, um, upper left side to build business applications based on those kits. We can bring data providers and consumers into the ecosystem based on those standards. We have an operating area and we have onboarding support, which at the end, the data space value is created. That's pretty much what we will build on what we are building right now after one year and four months. And we will bring this to the market in Q1 next year. And we talked about the trust framework from Gaia. We are right now compliant with 2204. But what we're doing already now, because we know what's coming, we've been working with you guys and with Pierce Group in, on, and with, uh, with Roland's group on 2210 or 11, whatever you want to call it at the end. 10, 11, 10x, let's call it like that. And we, will be comp we are ready to get compliant with that as well. So we're looking at the clearinghouse that was announced yesterday. We, have, we, all, we signed an MOU uh, with the relevant partners that we will use that clearinghouse with one of the potential partners like two systems um, that we are ready. Because as we all heard about, it's about deliver and industrialize and utilize. It's just, we have to stop talking about what could we do and we have to deliver on what we promised. Otherwise, we all lose trust in our endeavor not in the technology. And I think this is a key element. So we are compliant, as you mentioned as well, and we are ready with our release 3.0 in the beginning of next year to be compliant with 22, 10x, 10, 20, whatever you want to call it. So the point is how we started, what I presented last year, we had 28 partners. 28 partners was a good thing. Now we're talking about expanding. Also, Katina is global. And we do not believe in a protective environment. We strongly believe in globalization within Katina because our value chains are global, all of them. And I think we share that with many of your industries. And we have to invite partners to work with us and not against us. And the second element is we have to be fast. If you look at China, if those standards, what they are doing right now are set, we will never be able in the next couple of years to collaborate with them. We have to work now with China, with Europe, with Americas, to make that what we want to do as an endeavor a global endeavor. Otherwise, it's a lose-lose according to our industry. And I think this is very key. And so I'm very much delighted, not just to present on that we are compliant and that we're already getting compliant with GAIA-X, that we are going global. I think one a key element, what we really would like to say thank you, and we will get that on stage as well, is we are not just talking about it, we're also delivering. We will sign, or we just signed downstairs, our MOU, we're going to start the first hub, and Germans and French people can work together in a great environment and produce value. And we're very much happy that with PFA and Gallia, we are happy to, to sign an MOU that they start the first Katina hub in France. And this is a huge endeavor. <laughs> and the target is to bring the transformation into the market and find adopters to multiply. I think this is a very key element, and we get this gentleman in, in, um, on board in a second. But there's, Steve Jobs always said there's one more. So we look now into the past, what has been done, on what we did, what we will do in Q1. 
but we will not stop there. We would like to give you a glimpse on the future as well, because we all talked about it's not about one data space only, and so I'm very pleased that Matis is here on stage with me. We will look into the future next year to have interoperability of data spaces. So right now, our data space, we talk a lot to each other, but we do not collaborate on a technical level with each other. So what you would like to do next year, and you can measure us when we are back here on stage, maybe in a different environment, but similar, that we would like to bring our two data spaces together with Gaia in a trusted environment that we can collaborate on the first step on the business partner number and then the participants can walk between the two data spaces. And the second step that they are then also be able to exchange information on use cases. And we heard that as well before in Thomas's speech with Anna, and, and the colleagues, the data space support center, we will utilize as well on the top to help us to harmonize our activities and find the standard on the European level. So we'll bring all things to the table and thank you very much, Matisse. And I'd like to, like to get uh, our colleagues from PFA and, um, and Gallia quickly up on stage to take one picture because this French and German collaboration, I think, is something what we should celebrate because it's gonna work. Thanks, Oliver. That was incredible because including the picture, you stayed under 10 minutes. <laughs> that was actually very German. <laughs> but <laughs> um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy. I'm really happy. I'm really happy that, uh, that we show this, this is growing, at the, that, that everything gets, gets interactive. We had a meeting in Palma this year where we connected the verticals between each other and the verticals to the hubs. And we can really say that this ecosystem starts working now. And, and with that, I want to give it uh, to Stefan from Eleanor, guest from, our, from Switzerland, please. Thank you very much. We're like the new kid on the block. It's a pretty new project uh, which we could start in Switzerland. It's an innovation project in the city of Lucerne together with the universities of Lucerne and Fribourg and together with our main partner Swisscom. So I'm proud and honored to show you some insights about the project and where we are right now. Well, Actually, all starts with the idea of the commons. So it's, um, the commons have existed since the 10th century, or uh, even longer. So to prevent over-exploitation, the community set rules for the use of the commons. So these rules stipulated, for example, that how long farmer was allowed to let his cattle grow on the meadow. In addition, the commons were not freely accessible, so it was kind of a closed group only for the local farmers. So the advantages for the farmers and the form of this, and this form of agriculture, agriculture was that it created values, values such as responsibility, respect, but also the cohesion of the community. But even more, the farmers had the economic advantage that a small piece of land would not just be enough to be um, to, uh, to produce vital yield. So since the commons would later serve also the children, the users treated the land responsibly, the self-imposed rule secured this. So what does it mean in the future? And how can we use this idea of the commons also in the digital environment? In a study, the political scientist Eleanor Ostrom examined whether the selfish over-exploitation is really inevitable. 
So their conclusion was that common land can be sustainable, can be a sustainable concept if there are clear rules for the use. So in 2010, she became the first Nobel Prize, um, the first woman receive a Nobel Prize for their findings. So why shouldn't we able to transfer this idea of the commons into the digital world? So the idea was born to build a data cooperative where data consumers meet the data providers and data consumers and data providers in all kinds of origin, size, regardless of whether it's public sector, it's, the private, it's private companies, or residents, or even citizens. So these thoughts provided the foundation of Eleanor X, an urban data cooperative. Urban data is a broad field, and in addition to mobility, it also can relate to air quality, for example, tourist flows, where the heat islands are in cities, but also where the most attractive playgrounds are. So, but anyhow, it is very important to start pragmatic, so we defined the mobility sector, the mobility data, as a start, starting point for our pilot test. So, what is the problem with mobility data? And how could we provide a new data foundation to, um, to help kind of mitigate these problems or problem areas? So of course, it is about data in general. So there's just too little accurate, um, too little accurate and reliable and relevant data around us. So we miss some data to really do interesting and relevant predictive analysis. So of course, there's just a lack of data, and there is a lack of an ensure um, to ensure a confidential and, and, and a confidentially and privacy within data sharing. But there's also the lack of an influence on the purpose of the data usage. So where am we willing to provide my data as a citizen? And the lack of solution to support you and to support the legal agreement itself as well. There are disparate methods of data collection and transmission in which rhythm, places, and granularity is not on the same level. And thus, it's just a lack of data. And we tried to bring all these kind of problems together and find new ways to solve them. So let me show a like high level process understanding an overview about our product about our system ecosystem looks like. So behind the solution of the data cooperative we implemented the trust relay fabric from our from our partner Swisscom. So imagine there are two partners owning data. They share the same purpose which is an absolutely foundation to share data. But first of all, they need a data sharing agreement. This is one of the major challenges so far, the data sharing agreements. Nowadays, it often takes months to reach an agreement. So we provide a wizard to build, a, or to click and collect the elements of a data sharing agreement, which saves us a lot of time and money. Now we are almost there, so we need a data space to exchange these data. But it is very important that the data still remains at the two partners. So we are not collecting the data and store it centrally. So it's the trust relay data space comes, or it's, it's the trust relay data sp space comes into the place. It transports, just transports the, the data from A to B, from partner B to A. Hereby the data sharing agreements defines which queries may be asked from the one partner to another. So the data, as uh, so a trust relay platform starts with a purpose, supports a highly automated way to get data sharing agreements, and finally provides the data exchange space. 
So why is the Gaia X framework making an important difference? So basically, we share the same understanding of data sovereignty. There should be no centralization of data nor a lock-in. Like I already mentioned, the trust in the whole ecosystem is crucial, which means that the proper identification and data space for the data space participants is elementary. A third point is the legal aspect. We still lose a lot of time because of the lack of contemporary data sharing agreements, including legally binding signatures. And there will be no trust if there will be no if you are not able to guarantee an adequate data protection. So to make use of confidential computing is just a must. And last but not least, the interoperability is an absolutely elementary part of it as well. We will not be successful if cooperation suffers from technical hurdles. We need open standards and the highest degree of interoperability. So the benefits for our project to be Gaia X compliant is there will be many other data cooperatives or data spaces. These might be data cooperatives, but also different other data spaces. The interoperability between these data spaces is essential. So the generic principles and generic principles allow us um, other mobility cases to be implemented. And it, re it reduces the effort to scale our initial project to other interested cities or even wider. It's not just a smart city project, it can be extended to other fields as well. At the end, it's all about acceptance and trust. If people do not trust in our platform, we will not succeed. It will be hard to be, succeed, to be successful if there is a lack of trust. Therefore, Gaia X gives us additional credibility to our project. Concretely, the reuse of open data source components um, is one of the examples building up trust. And of course, exchange with other colleagues from all over Europe or the whole world is, a very, is very beneficial. Of course, there are also limitations within the idea of building up data cooperatives. So finally, it's about stakeholder engagement. So the size of a corporation has a direct impact on manageability. It's about coordination, it's about cooperation, and finally about collaboration. What do we do when the cooperative extends too much? Or what do we do if there are many decentralized, if there are many decentralized cooperatives? So there are two key elements. On the one hand, it is the standardized data sharing agreement. This allows and prevents, uh, this allows the treatment, the equal treatment of all the different stakeholders and prevents the inequalities. The other thing is, this, the second element is a participatory data stewardship. So it is not handleable to bring all these stakeholders together within one big data cooperative, so we have to implement these data stewards. They represent their interests, the interests of the, 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 the data providers in a, large, in a larger circle. But there will be also, it's somehow a combined role. There will be aspects of data attorney, but also aspects of a data broker. So coming to an end, what industry can take from this Lighthouse project? Well, first of all, we truly enable a Society 5.0, a Society 5.0 based um, project on democratic understanding of data ownership and an increased power and control to my own data. 
Furthermore, the trust relay technology is generic and not techno uh, technically restricted to urban data sharing. So we can adapt technology and also the cooperative philosophy to healthcare, for example, but also to energy and many more fields. We start small within the city of Lucerne. We start small with a pragmatic case to optimize the mobility. So it is very important also for us to do this incremental extension with new features, uh, features step by step, and of course, get the feedback and the learnings back into the concept. So thank you very much for having us here. For all those who have questions or want to get a deeper technical understanding of the platform and what we do, please visit us at our booth on your right side. Um, later on, we are happy to answer all of your questions. Thank you very much. Thanks, Stefan. Now, um, please. Jean-François, I think. Yes, good. Point. Good. So I will take care of the thing. So I put you in March 2020. And then is what I said. So uh, humans often, we know what we lose. Well, we, we, know, we know what we get when we lose it. And in that case, in March 2020, we lost the possibility of moving around. We were confined. And it was also the start, a bit a month later, the start of the adventure of AonaX. So uh, AonaX is uh, an adventure, a human adventure of a team. I am honored to be the president uh, of, of that association and representing uh, this uh, fantastic team. Some of them have uh, been in the room. AonaX is, uh, just for you to remember the name, is uh, coming from uh, two goddess, two Latin goddess, so that is pleasing, I know, for Francesco, or for all the Italians in the room. So if you, if you come back to Roman times, you have the goddess of the people departing, Abeona, and the goddess of the people coming back, Adeona. And so we plan to cover everybody in the move. We created for that this idea of uh, improving uh, improving mobility, transport, and tourism. We want to enhance these aspects that you can see in the slide, no need to repeat it, comfort, affordability, efficiency, etc., and make it everything fun and a, and a very good experience. And just for sustainability, you have here a quote of Timmermans. Of course, we know in our climate struck uh, planet Earth, we need to make an effort, and this kind of data space will be very useful for, for this. And one of the things we want to share with you today, and I think is a great news for us, is our demonstrator. Our demonstrator, and today in our booth, and there you have two experts, uh, Patrick Ebron and Benjamin Schultz, that are waiting for you. They will be able to show you, actually, that the GaiaX and the AonaX technology, it works. And we have done a demonstrator for it. So, first of all, why AonaX is making a difference for us? AonaX, first of all, is an anchor of trust. And we know, uh, I mean, GaiaX, sorry. GaiaX is an anchor of trust. I think Stefan has mentioned it before me, uh, and, uh, and Oliver and Sebastian. We, we need GaiaX to be a bit at the center of all this ecosystem to make sure that the trust is built. We need, because we need, and this is the second point, we need to build interoperability between the players. We need to build the rules between uh, the rules of data and the policies, and I, I, I celebrate here the success and the hard work, for example, of Martin with the labels. We need also to work on the cooperation with national hubs and the Data Spaces Initiative. For example, in AonaX, we build out technology very close with CatenaX, of Oliver Ganser here, uh, using the same EDC uh, connector. We need as well, and that is a demand for GaiaX, we need as well visibility, the less surprise possible, and cooperation, so we can move on together on this, uh, on this uh, field. So, of course, the benefits are obvious of, of solutions like this for the data or service owners, the data or service consumers, the end users, and public authorities. I won't spend time on this. You can imagine that by sharing data, you can improve the four of the partners uh, with that solutions. 
And so to be more specific, because today for us the big news is we have the version two of the demonstrator, again with Patrick and Benjamin there in the booth waiting for you to, to show it. Uh, you will be able, and by the way, you have the demonstrator going on on the screens there, uh, a, a little demonstration, but I know it's difficult to follow the two things at the same time. So, but we have really put an EDC connector in databases of Air France KLM, SNCF, Aéroport de Paris, Aéroport Marseille Provence, and Amadeus. And we are going to do it with Renault Group uh, because they join later and Happy Day. And they are actually EDC connectors connecting and sharing data to build, in that case, a, a trip, uh, what we call the trip of Lucy. That is a multimodal solution that you can see in the boots, and I will be talking a bit uh, later on on this. What you also will see in the, in the demonstrator is that we use verifiable credentials thanks to the GRIAX Trust framework. And you will see that actually you can put conditions to the access of data. For example, is your company from Europe or not? Or these kind of things that will allow you or not to connect. We have, of course, as I said, a connector solution. And this has built uh, a seamless travel app that you can see again in the, in the booth. So the, the, travel, the travel app you will see uh, connects the different partners to build this solution. We call it the Voyage de Lucie, the trip of Lucie. And it's about uh, a trip that you start in a plane between, let's call London and Paris Charles de Gaulle, the management of the transfer in Charles de Gaulle, so the time it takes how to do it. The trip as well for Air France KLM to go to the terminal in Marseille Airport, the management in the Marseille Airport transfer, the consuming of uh, museum resources, hotels, restaurants, activities, and that is built by Apidae, uh, the biggest aggregator of data tourism in France. And then with public transport, you move to the train station in Marseille and to Paris station thanks to SNCF that takes you in a, in a TGV. Then, for example, you will use a, a share card, a solution of mobility of Renault Group. I don't know for you, I'm, I'm sure you know, but Renault Group is actually developing quite a lot in, 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 in mobility solutions, especially notably with a subsidiary called Mobilize. And so you will be able to take a, 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 a Renault car that brings you to, uh, to consume, for example, a trip to the, um, to the Eiffel Tower. So this demonstrator, you can see in the booth, can demonstrate how we build this trip. So for AonaX, the situation presently is that in 22-23, after building the foundations, we have created the legal entity. Uh, we are very much working, starting between Spain and France, which is the two countries where we have head offices, even though you will have noticed that the, that the companies actually powering today AonaX are multinational companies actually present in, in the most places in, in the world. Uh, typically, I talk from Amadeus, we are in more countries than McDonald's, so it shows that we are very international. So we have been extended, uh, so creating the catalog. Today we have a catalog of data, which is the core, I think the nuclear reactor of a data space, and the demonstrator. In 23-24, we will be onboarding new providers and, and thankfully operationalizing the demonstrator we have today. And we hope to be live in 23-24 with a deployment with a vision of the Olympic Games in 24 in Paris. So what can take the industry for the Aona X project? First of all, is that it works. <laughs> so it works, you can check it again in the booths. Uh, it works with actually with uh, in open source. It works with actually bricks that have been done in collaboration again with other uh, data spaces here presented. So it's a collaboration process. And of course, we know that this is very important because this is what we will ensure future interoperability between the data spaces. So please reach our experts there. And we have, of course, also known that it's very important to have very strong use cases and to build trust between the partners. And that's what GaiaX can, can help. So again, if your conclusion, AonaX is to improve mobility, travel, and tourism thanks to the data exchange. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jean-Francois. Next up um, is Matthias from Eupro Gigant. And special thank you because Eupro Gigant brought a physical machine. So now you can not only see 
how it works, you can actually touch Gaia X when you have the live demos later on. Exactly, you can touch it. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, what's Eubro Gigant? So, Eubro Gigant is uh, that one. Works better than huh? <laughs> Thanks. Uh, Eubro Gigant is a, a short name for the European production Giganet. And our vision is that uh, we have a resilient and sustainable European manufacturing network and, 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 and really um, perfect industry in the future. So, and uh, with Eupro Gigant, we are looking at uh, uh, several goals. So one main goal is we want to have a sovereign data management. And on the other hand, we are looking at a multi-company, multi-location value chain where the partners are operating in multiple platform ecosystems and we want to, to handle this. And um, before I get into some, uh, some uh, topics from Eupro Gigant, I want to spend a minute uh, with you to think of how the journey began. Uh, and uh, we started our discussion completely out of the manufacturing. Um, we, we started our discussion thinking of natural ecosystems, yeah? where we have the environment, where we have organisms like the forest, you see such a forest here in the back, and where we have these, these ecosystems uh, that are open, that are, are dynamic, they are complex, and uh, yeah, that they are vulnerable uh, against disturbances and, uh, and calamities. So, um, but healthy, healthy ecosystems, they fight and they resist against the disturbances, and they are resilient. And, I think we, we can learn from nature and uh, also in manufacturing we have the globalized networks, very complex, very dynamic and we saw in the last years how disturbances uh, are harming this overall network and I think what we learned from the uh, nature monoculture is not a, a good idea. So we we have uh, a thought of, of this vision. You see such a drawing here of our first brainstormings and we thought, okay, to, to overcome all these, these, these topics here, um, we want to, to have Gaia-X as the framework, the framework for a, a standardized and interoperable um, network which have a, a trust anchor and uh, yeah, Especially looking at the SMEs, we, we have uh, topics to overcome, yeah? So um, the smart and medium enterprises, they, they have a hard time to, to get out relevant information out of their data. And uh, we, we saw in the last years that, uh, yeah, the choosing an, an, an platform a lot of platforms are pretty much closed and they run into login effect and, and that we, we want uh, to, uh, to overcome and uh, especially in the end it is all about acceleration and increasing the value creation speed. That is, this is our uh, major goal in, in the project. So we were asked by Roland to think, say something about the impact I think uh, the pro project impact for, for us as the consortial partners, uh, first of all, is that as a lighthouse project, we are visible and um, it is now a, a perfect situation to collaborate. And what I saw yesterday, and uh, we, we speak now within the lighthouse projects, it even started, Matis, the day before in the evening, uh, we, 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 we go into discussions, we, we tell about things that, that are working, that are still an, an issue, and uh, we have interests from 
um, people here in the audience, and that is, that is excellent in, in my opinion. And um, the market impact, I would say, uh, we, we brought our demonstrator with us. So um, with Eupro Gigant, you, you can get into these very uh, complex uh, topics. You, you can learn about decentralized and uh, a trustful environments in the manufacturing industry. And we, we can show the, the first technologies which are available and usable to, to get into the direction uh, for Gaia-X functionalities. And especially for SMEs, our consortia, um, they are more than, than 10 industrial partners in the consortia and a lot of them are SMEs. They have formulated use cases out of the industry and our research is use case driven. So I would say, uh, if you look at these use cases, it is easy to understand, easy to connect with these use cases and easy to adapt. And uh, for the industry, I, I think it's also very important that with this new uh, technology, we, we are visible as, uh, as innovative leaders and, uh, and really we should use this as an USP, especially for, for SMEs to, to uh, strengthen their, um, their global um, um, market. So some, some words and you can see more at, your, at our stand here, we brought this really nice um, milling machine with us all the way to, to Paris. And uh, yeah, we are with Eupro Gigant uh, based on Gaia X, we are up and running. And uh, we completely uh, fulfill the functional requirements of the Gaia X framework. And uh, we have chosen an approach that combines on one side the Delta DAO technology stack based on Web3 technology and on the other side uh, the Eupro Gigant um, Edge which uh, is working as a Gaia X node into this infrastructure and which is highly functional but also on the other hand, open and affordable. And uh, I can say this, and at the, this point, it was an excellent decision to partner with Delta Dow, the team of Kai, uh, because we have speeded up um, the topics in the last months tremendously. And uh, yeah, as I said, we are up and running and showing this at our stand. Yeah, so the Eupro Gigant portal is live. It is working as an, um, a decentralized and customizable marketplace, so to say, in a, in a multi-data multi and, and service approach, um, uh, fully functional, like I said, with the Gaia-X framework. So please have a look afterwards at our demo. So, you also asked me to say something about the learnings. Uh, learning curve was pretty high um, and tremendous. So, um, one learning I, I took is that uh, really understanding the principles behind Gaia yeah, and, 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 and functionalities that are able is, is, is key, is key to get to a decentralized business model where all participants in the value chain can, can participate and then can, can think of their value creation. And, and that is very important and that we saw because we have chosen this, this use case um, approach, we, we set up five use cases and in each and every use case we see the value add when you rely on these principles in a trustful 
environment. And I would say well, what's also important to say is that it is very, very important uh, to think of uh, the uh, sovereign data management and, and data governance, and on the other hand, on standardization, as others already mentioned, on standardization and, and open, open interfaces. And uh, we, we had interesting discussions yesterday. I think also other industries can, can adapt this methodology. We, we uh, developed here these use case methodologies to adapt this uh, also um, for, for their industries. How you can join? Um, we, we have an, an industrial advisory board which is open, happy. To, to join a uh, scientific advisory board. Thank you very much for, for your advices and for your support uh, so far. And uh, we, we are very, very happy that you join afterwards our real demonstrator and, and have a look. And uh, yeah, hopefully we, we see us then next year. Um, up and running with a lot more functionality and hopefully with the engagement between the different Lighthouse projects. I think that is an, a major key now to, to get it done and to, to interconnect. Um, therefore, I thank you very much for inviting us on stage and uh, again, the invitation to our really nice milling machine and uh, the demo. Thank you very much. Thank you, Matthias. Next up is uh, Mobility Data Space. Michael, please. Which one is the right one? This one is the right one. So thank you very much. A warm welcome from me as well. Um, so listening to these brilliant fellows before, you could say, okay, mobility data space, MDS, uh, you could also call, this, call it um, YADS, yet another data space. So what's up with the mobility data space? Um, All right, okay, thank you so much. Uh, I'm not that keen with uh, technology, <laughs> my apologies. So what's the purpose of the mobility data space in Germany? Um, some time ago, um, the German government thought it's uh, the right time to deal with mobility, to deal with sustainability, but also to deal with digital economy and, and data economy. And they made a holistic program around mobility. And it's very clear when you want to deal with mobility and you want to improve it, that you have to introduce digital services, don't you? There's no way of building more roads and railways and stuff like that. You have to use them in a more efficient manner. So it's all about digital services. And in order to uh, implement and to run digital services and to use them, you have to exchange data. And that was the reason to introduce the mobility data space. And they have done that uh, in a private organization uh, intentionally because they also wanted to uh, prove that it's possible to run a data space under economic circumstances in Europe. So here we are right now. Um, as we are also compared to the other uh, companies we have seen before, a rather small company. Uh, we are very much dependent on working together with other initiatives, data spaces, um, and not on a horizontal level only, but also on a vertical level. So for instance, if you think about mobility, you're riding an e-car, you're run out, running out of battery, uh, you badly want to find the next charging uh, point, uh, so you need the proper information. So where does the information come from? From your SatNav system in your car. And where does the system get the data from? From a manufacturer, from the map company, from the 
municipality you're currently located at and maybe from the grid provider. So there are three data spaces involved, the mobility data space, an energy data space, and a smart city data space. So it's very important that we have a framework ready so that data spaces can interoperate with each other. And that is also the reason why we appreciate very much the work that, that Gaia-X is doing, uh, IDSA are doing, and so on and so on. So this is our architecture. Seems lame because all of you have seen that already. It's a federated architecture. Uh, we're making sure that uh, by implementing that architecture that data is traded or exchanged in a sovereign manner. What does it mean? So those institutions and companies who own the data keep full control over the data. And I think that's very important. That's the one thing. The second thing is that we're making sure that there is trust between buyer and seller. Um, we sometimes we, we compare ourselves to an eBay for data. That is exactly what eBay does. Uh, they provide a catalog. They create trust by trusted identities. But once the contract is done, the goods is exchanged or ex exchanged between uh, seller and buyer immediately, and that is uh, what data spaces do, right? Um, we talked about interoperability before. I think that's very, very much key, as I've mentioned before, in a horizontal manner, in a vertical manner, but it's not about the interoperability between the data spaces. It's about interoperability between participants of a data space E, uh, A, and a data space B, and a data space C. I'm not very much concerned about the technical constraints, to be honest with you, but what about the logistics, organization, legal constraints? And we want to do that across, at least across Europe, or maybe even better on a global level. So, and that is also the reason why we need organizations like IAX and IDSA not to help with architectural and technical frameworks only, but also help with those legal and contractual and billing and metering constraints as well. All of that has to be somehow harmonized. Otherwise, uh, we won't get the boost in the area of digital and data economy. We, in our case, try to make that sure by strengthening the ecosystem with a massive scaling of participants, a massive scaling of business cases, and a massive scaling of transactions, finally. Yeah? So sometimes we, we used to say we are kind of in the wild west of data spaces, so people are setting claims and uh, they're very much looking for what's the right technology and architecture, and that is what we have seen um, um, today as well. And I think there is not an answer yet where we're working on that. And it's not about who is right, who is wrong. The key is that, the, that we harmonize very quickly and we scale very quickly because there are competitors, we know them. It's not necessary for me to, to, to mention them. Uh, so finally, it's a, it's a, it's a matter of time, um, whether we succeed with those principles, yes or no. So for us, the, the, the strong network and the scaling network is, is, is very important. And uh, the next one is, of course, uh, about the business cases. So there is no point in um, um, exchanging or trading data just for the sake of it, right? So there must be a purpose of the data. And the purpose of the data in, in case of mobility are mobility services. Innovative, modern, uh, mobility services, and it's not that we, as the mobility data space, would have introduced um, mobility services as a new thing. There are already mobility services existing since years. So the question is now, of course, why do you need now another uh, mobility data space, as I've mentioned uh, before? The key is that in the f mobility of the future, 
the solutions for um, yeah, for the tasks are more complex. There will be services where you need to combine data from several providers. You have to um, work on that data with AI methodologies and you have to provide results of that to different consumers. So it's a many-to-many -many relationship. And that is a key component of a success of a business case for a mobility data space. So far we have seen 101 relationships. So there is an OEM and working together with a large city and they creating a solution. That OEM with that city. It doesn't scale up, right? What we need to achieve, particularly in the in the um, joint mobility, intermodal mobility of the tomorrow is a combination of different services. And combination of different services means combination of different data sources. And that is where we, where we want to go to. All right, so finally, of course, while we say it's all about uh, business cases, otherwise it doesn't work, uh, we say, okay, it's now up to you Unleash your data. Don't sit on your data and look at it like your jewels. So unleash your data, share it with others, and then we, we will be successful. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Next up, Matthias with the SGSN. Uh, this one? Oh, that right one. The right one. The right one. The right one. <laughs> All right, uh, thank, you, uh, thank you everyone. Um, I'm going to talk about the Smart Connected uh, Supply Network, one of the Gaia-X uh, lighthouses. And it's solving a lot of problems, so let's start with, uh, with one. Let's try to solve the global chip shortage. And to solve that, it's really easy. You have to buy one of those machines. It's a lithography machine. It's made by a European company, ASML, and it is the machine you need to build the world's smallest and most energy efficient uh, microchips, but it's highly complex. And it's an example of high-tech equipment that we see all over the place, not only in the semiconductor industry, but also in healthcare, um, uh, in scientific instrumentation, and in many other industries. We had the presentation today from, uh, from Airbus, uh, we see it in the automotive uh, sector. It is equipment that is not only highly complex, uh, but also produced in a very high mix because it needs to be tailored to the needs of each individual uh, customer and therefore is also produced in a very low volume. And within the Smart Connected Supply Network, we are working with organizations who are in the supply chain creating this kind of uh, equipment and all the elements and sub-assemblies that are needed uh, for this. And to do that, supply chain collaboration is a must. It was already a must uh, earlier on, uh, but today this really is a burning platform. We see chip shortages, we see uh, uh, the discussion on the strategic autonomy, uh, we see an increased demand for many of those uh, projects, so that really puts a huge strain on uh, the, the supply chain for high-tech uh, uh, equipment. Um, and that's not a singular supply chain. It's not that you could say, well, let's start with one OEM and then look at what's happening in that supply chain. Of course, those OEMs are, are doing their analysis. They're looking at, uh, okay, who's active in my, uh, my supply uh, network? What are the first tier, the second tier uh, suppliers? What are they doing? Where are their potential bottlenecks? But in reality, many of those companies are not only working, for instance, for the semiconductor industry, but also for the aerospace industry and also for the medical instrumentation industry. Uh, and because of the low volumes, uh, it is not like a, a, a singular supply chain, but it is really project based and each uh, product can have its own uh, uh, chain. So effectively, what we have is a network of suppliers that needs to work for multiple customers and also in itself has um, uh, multiple uh, suppliers. So we need a smart and connected network and this is the ambition that we have with SCSN. We want to build the world's smartest network of high-tech suppliers and that will be driven by data 
and it is driven by data today. So we are active with approximately 300 of those manufacturers. This number is growing. And we want to provide them with improved efficiency, increased resiliency, and an improved agility to be able to adopt to the needs of today's really changing markets. And also from an OEM's point of view, provide a virtually integrated network. Just to remind you, these are 300 independent companies. Provide them with a virtually integrated network as a one-stop shop uh, for sourcing high-tech equipment. And I already mentioned it, this is about data. And the Smart Connected Supply Network is about sharing data at a very large scale. This will not work if we only do it between one OEM and one supplier or with one supplier and a couple of, uh, of, of customers. No, we need, really need to do it at, at a large scale. We need to share data on manufacturing equipment, on manufacturing capabilities uh, in, in the field of Industry 4.0. We need to think about product designs through the entire lifetime of a product for the reconfiguration, the recycling, which was already mentioned earlier today. We need to think about the logistics. We need to think about the maintenance of, uh, of existing products. It is data that we need to support all kinds of, uh, of applications, starting with uh, really basic purchase to pay collaboration, being able to send out a purchase order, and we, we heard the numbers today from, uh, from Airbus that can be quite large and that can quite explode uh, further on in, uh, in the network, and then from there work on other cases like product lifecycle management, maintenance, or collaborative uh, engineering. But data sharing is the beginning of all of this. If we do not solve the data sharing problem, we can forget about all these uh, applications. So this is something that we try to tackle in SESM. And then if you dive a bit into it, essentially what we need is a shareable digital twin of everything that's happening in this uh, supply network. And in the picture uh, behind me, you can see the reference architecture model industry 4.0. Um, it has many dimensions, and I just want to highlight one of them, and that is the data hierarchy dimension. They say previously we were talking about a hierarchy of systems, but today the world is about having a hierarchy of data, about uh, sensors and assets on uh, the shop floor, all the way to data which is happening in the connected world in the, in the supply chain. And effectively what we do in, uh, in SESN is that we work with the manufacturing companies, with those high-tech uh, suppliers, and we provide them with a connector. In our case, it's the IDS connector of the International Data Spaces Association, which we also had here on the stage uh, earlier, uh, earlier on. And that connector is the singular point for these organizations to share their data. It's available in the cloud, and it allows organizations to decide, okay, this is my data, and I would like to share it with these partners that I have in, in the network. And this has matured significantly uh, in the uh, last few years. We now work with 10 different uh, service providers who are offering this as a commercial service to manufacturing uh, companies. Uh, and that is operational today with over 300 uh, companies. But we're not there yet. Um, so we can take data from this data hierarchy and put it on those connectors and, and in the cloud, and that can work. But as we have learned today, uh, there are many other initiatives in Europe that do the same. We have uh, Eupro Gigant, uh, which, uh, which does it maybe for other elements in this, uh, uh, in this network, and maybe for other organizations uh, in your ecosystem. Um, uh, and in particular, and I would like to underline that, uh, automotive, uh, with Katina X is also a very important element uh, for this. Some of the companies that work with SESN are not only active in this high-tech equipment like the semiconductor uh, industry, but they also produce parts and assemblies which go into trucks and cars and stuff. And so they need to be able to participate in this automotive uh, supply network uh, as well. Um, and so Katina X is providing those automotive companies with connectors and technology to be able to do that and to use those services. But then if I'm a manufacturing company, do I then need three different connectors? I don't want that. I really want to have a singular connection to this data space and then be able to decide with whom I'm going to share data with. 
And this is really now a crucially important element on our roadmap. And, well, Oliver already mentioned it. This is something that we are now working on with Gaia-X to achieve, to ensure that the identification and trust not only works in our own ecosystem, but that can also spread throughout these other ecosystems. That I know that I have a trusted partner, not only in high tech, uh, but also in automotive and in aerospace and logistics and so on. To achieve cross data space uh, interoperability using the trust framework and the federation services that were presented yesterday. So we are working right now, today, really hard to make sure that all these connectors that I show here in this picture are being represented uh, using the trust framework uh, in the Gaia-X uh, infrastructure and that it is being made available. And we will demonstrate that uh, in a moment uh, during the, the breakout uh, session. So just to sum up with uh, some key takeaways. SESN today is operational. It's not managed by us as TNO, as a research company. We, we had our role in, in setting this up and, and helping them with uh, uh, the technologies and so on. It's currently managed by an independent non-profit foundation, uh, which is working with uh, many service providers uh, to provide the connectivity to manufacturing uh, companies, serving, as I said, uh, a large group of, uh, of, of organizations. For us, data sovereignty is really at the heart of it. We could have also solved this by putting all the data on a centralized cloud or centralized platform, but if we had done that, I think we would not have succeeded, first of all. Uh, and secondly, it would uh, start off with all kinds of business models that we do not want to work with, with new monopolies being introduced. And now, really, we were able to put these organizations in charge. And for us, the most important thing also to announce here today is that we will use Gaia-X and the Trust Framework uh, to ensure Data Space Federation. Uh, between all the, uh, the various data spaces using all the different technologies and, and organizations that come here together and that we have seen here uh, today. So with that, I would like to hand over to the next one and I invite you to uh, join us for the demo uh, later on today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And last but definitely not least, Klaus with Struktura X, that's the foundation the infrastructure part. Now you're stealing all the thunder. I, I wanted to start with, well, one more thing, because <laughs> it's different. What we've seen is seven data space projects, and, um, well, data resides on infrastructure. And what we uh, have seen is the data, if you look at the whole value chain, uh, Matai has talked about 300 companies that are storing the data. I think Oliver has even thousands of customers he's looking at. Katrin mentioned uh, we need to be enabled to select where actually our data resides. We need to be able to uh, qualify NutriScore, Martin. Uh, we need to qualify where this infrastructure is. And that is actually, um, in short, uh, what StructuraX is about. Um, that was one too many. I wanted to start with this slide. If you count the logos, it's actually 30. And I want you to think about it. In this room, there's about 300 people. The 30 members that are on this slide, so if they have all two representatives in this room, then every fifth person in this room is working together in Struktura X as infrastructure, interconnect, or um, uh, integration partner, product partner, to make sure that we generate, a, in the future, with Struktura X, a Gaia X compliant infrastructure. Uh, so that's the objective of this group of 30, currently 30 companies, hope it's going to be more. And <clears throat> compliance is one thing. Uh, so we know exactly which attributes each and every service are, where it's located, how it does uh, fit to any kind of label. But we actually um, also want to go a little bit further because I don't think anybody in this group, anybody in, in, in the room, wants to actually have individual negotiations, individual finding who the heck has the right service, wants to sign into 30 or 60 different providers. So the second thing we're doing is we're going to create an ecosystem of federated providers. 
Uh, so it's not that, uh, think about it, 1,000 different or 300 different suppliers, they all have their in individual infrastructure providers, they all need to have a login at some place to, to at the end connect the services and the data. No, we also want to have this single access to the infrastructure services um, that Struktura X members are providing. And we, we want to go a step further. It's not only compliance, it's not only the federation of the services. We also want to make good on the promise of honestly real technical interoperability and portability uh, uh, of data and make sovereign services um, happen. Uh, so what we'll see, we'll actually also see this in the demo, we're working together to make sure you write code once and you can be assured it runs on any of the providers or you run code once and the providers deal with all the SLAs to make it working and running on different type of platforms on how to distribute services on top of that. And it's the last sentence slightly different, but of course we also, uh, Struktura X is a number of European infrastructure providers. Um, we see this as a strong way to implement, to support the idea of having a choice of real sovereign services from Europe. Of course, to, of course, to support all the lighthouses and other Gaia X infrastructure projects. If I, if I, if I talked about this idea of one, uh, I just want to look, want you to look at the uh, graph on the right hand side. I just try to picture what is the geographic coverage today. Uh, so once our promise holds through, you will be able uh, 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 to spread your service across all of these blue boxes that are current in the picture and not with 30 sign-ons in different providers with a single sign-on and at a point in time with interoperability, portability, distributing your services. And if I say distributing of services, I think Francesco mentioned in the very, very beginning, you also have to think about distributing to edge data centers, distributing to mobile providers, distributing, distributing to services that are very, very close in a close proximity to certain uh, production sites, for instance, in order to allow the necessary resilience latency of the services. And it will still connect to the regional data centers. It will still connect to the data centers in other com companies, and it will still connect uh, to cloud services. So how do we go about it? Um, actually, uh, everybody who's been here yesterday has seen the picture, uh, what we'll do is we will, just as we've seen in the demo, every provider will generate their self-descriptions. So we know exactly the identity, we know exactly the type of service, the certifications, the compliance to the label criteria, because all the attributes are inside the self-descriptions. <coughs> we'll have it run through the GAIA-X compliance service. And in that first step, we have achieved the, transpar the Nutri score, uh, looking at Martin, we achieve the transparency so you know exactly what, what you get. You have a power of choice, a transparent power of choice, which infrastructure provider you use. The second step, it's actually, that was the third. The second step is that we will actually use the services out of the Gaia X framework to actually start federating the identities, federating the catalogs. So everything I already mentioned before, a single identity is enough to identify you across multiple providers. In the catalog, you will be able to search not only, so I'm always looking at you, Martin, not only looking at French providers, but you will also see who is offering the very, very same services in Italy or in Finland or what have you. And you don't have to collect and call any kind of certifications or whatever stuff. It's a validated statement of compliance to the criteria that are set by the GAIA-X Trust Framework by the criteria that are set in the labeling document, but that are also possibly be set by the specific ecosystem. So if energy, if airport manufacturing uh, believes there are additional rules, healthcare, uh, we will have that choice, uh, the attributes validated in the catalog, in the federated catalog available to allow you having access to a federated 
group of um, providers. And then ultimately, and this is, I think, where the promise becomes very, very interested, and this is what uh, we're actually going to show at uh, the demo on the other side. We build the systems to um, asserted portability and um, uh, compliance. So the, I, I picked three examples here. One is you develop software once, and all the environments, because we are aligning the life cycles of the software stacks that we are running, we're testing them, you can be assured that uh, you cannot only deploy, but at the end it will also run. We have a second scenario that you will also see in the demo, where you actually deploy to a virtual system where all the participants that are making up such a um, environment will actually guarantee that the load is going to be distributed between different providers in different countries, that we actually also have the interconnection guaranteed and dynamically guaranteed between all the providers. So it virtually really looks like a single environment, even though it's being provided by multiple Saharan providers. And even one step beyond, uh, it's an idea on how we, it's a third line, it's how we can actually easily add additional nodes, oh, I'm over time, additional nodes to uh, these kind of systems in order to expand the system of distributed providers. And with that, I skip this slide and just make one statement. The goal and objective, objective of StrukturaX is provide the necessary infrastructure with the choice, with the transparency, to be the host for the services of data wherever you choose such a specific provider is needed, demired, <laughs> needed, required, or demanded. It's explicitly, just let me say this, this is explicitly not trying to pitch against hyperscalers or against other providers. It's a choice. We are offering a choice to have a one European system of federated providers. So you, based on your requirement, can choose where to go. And with that, I'm done. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much to all of you and the presentations. Um, I really want to do a quick summary. Yesterday we were here and we talked about the demo case and you remember we had Dufour and Mont Blanc, very simple relationship and we built a new data space and we saw a case that we simplified to get started but the code was real. Today we saw the Lighthouse projects and the Lighthouse projects are all about industrialization of those ideas and here everything is real. The business case, the code and the deployment. And when we think about what lighthouses really do in the nautical world, lighthouses are leading the way. And this is exactly what our lighthouses do. They lead the way from Gaia concepts into industrialization and they really want to encourage everyone to follow those lighthouse projects and engage deeply with them because you can save time and save time means you accelerate and secondly, we get ready to grow and we can grow much faster if we make use of the tremendous investments and know how that has been built in your projects. Thank you very much.